Cynthia, welcome to the Just Peace Talano Ambure at COVID-19. And here with us are the women from the Kaunrove, Maretha Tangivakatini, uh, the president of the Lambasa Association, Market Association, and uh, a young woman from uh, the Kaunrove also in the village of uh, Navivia, Merelendua. We continue with the conversation and the dialogue, building just peace community at, uh, uh, and changing environment and climate. And please welcome. And here with us is the director program, Paolo Mbalina Korodawa, who will be moderating the session. And welcome to this episode, Mrs. Uh, Tangivakatini and uh, Mary. Thank you for your willingness to be part of this. I'm sure you have a lot of interesting stories to tell us and tell the viewers who are listening in uh, tonight. To begin with, can you tell us a bit about yourselves? I'm Maretta Tengvakatini, originally from Nawi in the Kondrove. And uh, now I'm residing in Madhuata and uh, the president of the Lambasa Market Vendors Association. Thank you, Mary. Naka Mbulare, my name, my name is uh, Mary Lendua, and I'm from the village of Tawara, and I'm residing in Nagevia, representing the young women. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'd like uh, both of you to share on your experiences as, uh, as a woman, um, and as a woman during the time of COVID-19. As a woman leader, coming from a village and what I have learned during COVID-19 is the communication breakdown from the grassroots level or the villagers and those living in town. And uh, what they've been asking about during the uh, COVID restrictions is why. Why are the villagers have to be um, attained by the curfew hours? Because the disease or the virus was in town and they were the same people going around in the village, staying in the village and they were restricted to, to have that free space or Talanoa session which is normally done in the village setting during that uh, curfew hours. Thank you, Mareta. Mary, what are some of the experiences um, and priorities for you as a woman leader? Well, as a leader, in our community, we are facing the lead insecurity. Uh, we, really, we really need to look into that. Eh? And uh, as a young leader, and during this COVID-19, we have to plant our own food. And uh, this issue, it's, it's really a big thing for us in the community. Thank you, Mary. You were watching Transcend Oceania Justice Talano Mure at COVID-19. Join us as we bring you the next segment after this break. Welcome back to this uh, segment, um, Mareta and Mary. Perhaps at this time, if you could tell us and tell the viewers how you responded and how you coped during this time of COVID-19 as a woman leader. As a woman leader, I'm thankful for the training that I've already underwent through Transcend Oceania and uh, a few more trainings that I have uh, always attended, it really empowered me to stand up and uh, help my communities during this time of uh, 
pandemic uh, crisis by applying what I have learned and that we have to be confident and not to be panicked. And I've, uh, uh, while in the market, during the first day of this um, crisis, people were panicking because um, of the rushing of uh, public into the supermarkets. And uh, we were told to wear masks and gloves, which is not a norm for us in the market. And uh, we have to go around and uh, um, talk to our fellow vendors in the market that we have to follow what the government wants mm -hmm. for our safety. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Mary, for you as a woman leader in a village setting, how have you responded to the challenges of COVID-19? As a young woman, the training I have been to has, has helped me a lot to become a peace builder in the community and to help, help other people. Mm -hmm. So can you give us an example, specific example of how the training has helped you to manage and cope? with the situation in the village during this time of COVID-19. The training I've been to has helped me a lot to provide peace and to reach out to young people and talk to them so that they can help to help them reduce violence. As women leaders, for you Mareta, a woman leader in an urban setting and for you Mary, a woman leader in a village setting. What has been some of the major challenges and barriers for leadership for you? As for me, in the market, we are, I'm surrounded by males. It is a multi-ethnic uh, place. We have different cultures, different uh, religions. And uh, to be a woman in that with uh, 1,000 plus vendors, but only 200 that is registered in, the, in our association. But whatever we are doing in the market benefits the whole vendors, which is more than 1,000. And I have to stand up and uh, just whenever the crisis happens, I have to leave my store and also to my fellow women um, committee reps. We have to leave our stall and help the market attendants in uh, making sure that uh, law and order is followed in the market. And uh, during any time of crisis, we have to help them understand that um, we are bound by our market bylaws. It sounds like you play some mediator role in your workplace when issues come up. Yes. Mary, mm. as a woman leader in a village setting, what are the major challenges and the barriers for you? Well, in the village, the, the, the men always speak and left out. So being the leader, we have to work hard and to make sure that our ways are being heard. So during the crisis, we have to go to the Turanganikoro and he has to send the message around so that they can follow the structure. The Thank event. you. You are watching Transcend Oceania, Justice Talano Mure at COVID-19. Join us in the next segment after this break.
Welcome back to this last segment of this episode on women's innovation in the Northern Division. You have worked so hard as women uh, leaders um, in the village setting and in the urban uh, setting to bring about change. And some of those changes are the things that you've talked about in your challenges that you want change in the Northern Division. What are some recommendations? What are some suggestions you have to bring about changes for women in the Northern Division? Government officials have to have better understanding when they deliver any information and uh, there should be wider consultation to women and girls. Like in the village structure, we normally have male as the head man, the Turangani Koro. And uh, during time of crisis at uh, COVID-19, while I was in the village, there were no sugar in Sabsabu, but our women have to go fishing and tend to have uh, meals from breakfast, lunch, and uh, and uh, dinner. And that uh, really touches me because they were always on the sideline during any uh, discussion or any decision that is made in the village. And uh, in the market, I've seen that uh, women have to, uh, women vendors have to go home yeah, because of the restriction, the overcrowded in the market. And uh, they have to come up with this uh, uh, butter for better system. It, uh, and that really helps women. When they are not coming to the market, they just do it online. And that's where they start to earn their living and not just depending on, uh, on selling in the market. Thank you. Thank you. And for you, Mary, what are your recommendations in the village setting where you come from um, for changes for women? Well, in the community, we really need support from government or officials to help us head our title of land. Because in this COVID-19, it, it really taught us a lot to plant our own food, and we had this little land, so it taught us to use our resources wisely and, and sustainable. Thank you again, Mareta and Mary, for joining us in this Just Peace Talanoa. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for watching. As we conclude with our Just Peace Talanoa Mbure at COVID-19, we are reminded once again, here with us is Mareta Tangivakitini, the president of the Lambasa Market Vendors and Farmers Association, and Mary Lendua, the young woman leader from Navia Via, the Conrobe. To transcend just peace and development is to continue the work of building just peace development in changing environment and climate. Please join us again in our next episode.